rough framing? Really? It's the best way. <laughs> hey gang, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Stud Pack Dream House Build. In our previous video, you saw Jordan, Rad, and I build this amazing set of stairs out of Advantech scraps left over from our subfloor. And that thing came out unbelievable. We used a piece of paper as a template, cut it out to get our treads and our risers just perfect, glued and screwed it all together, and that thing is solid as a rock. And now that the stairs are up, we can come up here safely without our rickety old aluminum ladders. And that's good for us because this is gonna be our home for quite a while as we start tipping up these walls, building this roof, and getting this building dried in to start mechanicals. But if you think the walls downstairs were exciting, wait till you see the walls up here. We got a ton of stuff going on with these walls. I'm gonna start out front here, a massive wall with three huge windows, four or five feet wide, seven foot tall with a transom on top, black on black. Can't wait to put those in and see the amazing view we have out front. Over here, we're gonna have a combination of a two by six and a two by four wall. And I've already laid out the bridge. I can't wait to build the bridge. I've laid out the opening. That's gonna be super exciting. How many bridges have you walked across in a house before? Probably one or two in oh, my really? whole life, yeah. Oh, cool. Maybe more, I don't know. Nothing outside though. That's gonna be so unique, can't wait. On the back here, a big slider in the middle with flanked by a window on either side. That's gonna go out onto our back deck. Probably gonna screen that in. Massive bathroom here in the corner. Vanity, toilet, massive shower that I can't wait to tile it because I know Jordan's gonna pick out something super exciting. And then a pretty long kitchenette right here. Many appliances, it's gonna be epic. But before we start bringing all our two by fours up here and tipping up walls, we gotta know where they go, right? So we have our plans, some tape measures, some pencils, a chalk line. Let's lay out our walls, snap them, get our tools up here and start building some walls on the second floor of the dream house. All right guys, we're gonna pop our line for the wall at the front of the house and I wanna come up straight up from our rim right there and that's where I'm gonna put my tape, like that. I don't wanna hook here or even there because then my layout's gonna be off and we're not gonna be flush with the outside of the wall which is super important. And this is high up, dude. Yeah. All right, let's go mark the other corner. We'll pop that line. All right, Jordan, what's the width of your bathroom? Five, four, five feet, four inches from the exterior wall to the interior wall. So from the exterior of the outside wall to the interior of the interior wall. All right, and then three and a half to the exterior. Yeah. Right, right there. Cool. 64 and 67 and a half. I'll go mark this one. I'll pop those two lines. All right, guys, we got all our chalk lines laid out, all our walls laid out. Now, we did make two modifications on the plans, on the fly. Got a couple of two by six walls we're going to throw up. We're going to show you what that's all about later when we get to those walls. But for right now, Rad is downstairs. We got our pick of pre cut studs. Those are pre cut for nine foot ceilings. We don't have to cut them to length at all. Ready to go. It's a big time saver. He's going to toss them up here. We got all our tools. So let's build our very first wall on the second floor of the Stud Pack Dream House. All right, guys, there's our first wall for the second floor. Got it all laid out on our chalk line. Now we're gonna tip it up, but so that it doesn't fall on the neighbor's propane tank, we're gonna put a, a nail right here, toe nail it at a 45, about every four feet, and that's gonna act as a hinge when we tip it up. There are all kinds of ways to do that. You could put a block right here, screw or nail it into the rim joist. That way that block is gonna keep the wall from sliding off and it's gonna keep you on the layout, but I just use the method you prefer. Let's stand this wall up, boys. All right, everybody use their pinkies. Go ahead, Dad. You're good. All right, got our first wall up. Took like five minutes. Now the next wall right here is gonna be in the bathroom. We're gonna make that out of two by sixes. Slight modification we made. 
We ran out of pre-cut two by six studs, 104 and 5 eighths. We're gonna head downstairs, cut some, throw them up here, build that last wall. showed you the toenail method, here's the block method. I gotta say, that's a little easier to me. <laughs> Let's tip this wall up, guys. Well, I'm gonna be sitting right here, dropping the kids off at the pool. For a second, I was like, oh, I know. Good, cool. I was like, we'll see how this goes. We'll see how this goes. I know, right? That's cool. <laughs> All right, guys, we've got those two walls built. Now it's time to do the west side. Same thing. We're going to have a two by six wall and a two by four wall. Two by six wall over here on top of the other two by six wall. Because if we put a two by four wall on top of this one, we'll have a little ledge there on the drywall. It's always going to get dirty. So we just rather have a smooth sheet of plywood or drywall all the way up. But right here, we can transition to a two by four wall because that's all we need. Now where I am kneeling is actually the headroom in the stairway. Our header we put in is right here. We didn't cut this out yet because we were trying to adjust it, get maximum headroom. We like where it is. So I'm going to cut this out with the circular saw, trim it up with the router, and we can build our walls. All right, got this wall built really easy. A few details we want to point out. Number one, this is our opening for the future bridge. It is four foot nine wide, really wide. But remember, it is providing cover downstairs when you're walking from the garage into the house. So you're out of the rain. This bridge is basically going to be your big umbrella. Made a two by 12 header with a piece of half inch plywood in between. And we just lifted it all the way to the top plates to maximize our ceiling height. And then come on down here to the corner. Remember a detail we always do when we're nailing these down to our subfloor, put your nails over here in the corners, out of the way of your electrician and your plumbers so they can drill holes there and not ruin an expensive hole saw or auger bit. You guys can thank me later. Next wall we're gonna do is this two by six wall right here, kind of like we did over there. And remember we had to custom cut each one of those. So let's grab our tape measure, head downstairs, and cut a bunch of studs 104 and 5 eighths inches long and build that last wall on the western side.
All right, guys, we got the two by six wall stood up really easy. These are going very fast. And there are a lot of details we're thinking about right now that's gonna make this job a success later. Let me point out a few of them. I already talked about why we put a two by six wall here. Plan showed a two by four wall on top of the lower two by six wall. If we would have done that again, we would have had a little ledge right here and Jordan never was gonna dust that, right gang? It might've been a cool place for some LEDs, but it's gonna look much better if that plane's straight up. The other thing we're thinking about is some natural lighting in this stairway. We really don't want a window here opposite the door because I can just see Jordan opening this door and the setting sun, boom, blazes him. So we're actually thinking about maybe putting three small square windows really up high within the existing framing, like a 14 inch rough, yeah, right? Look cool. Yeah, way up there. And if you want something bigger, we can always move a couple of those studs. Another detail we wanna show you has to do with our blower door chest, already thinking about that too. What I wanna do, I wanna put our entry door in and put a blower door in the entry door before we cut in all our window openings and see how tight of a wooden balloon we actually made. A blower door actually pressurizes or depressurizes the inside of the building and tells you how much leakage you have. So to combat our leakage, the whole outside of the building get skinned in zip sheathing with the zip tape. Super system, can't wait to use it. But what do we do right here? We don't wanna air seal out here. We wanna air seal right here at the stairwell where Jordan's house is. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put a piece of zip on the outside right here. We're gonna turn the corner with it right here. We're gonna put a piece of tape on that corner. Then we're gonna throw a stud right here, finish our zip on the outside and tape that. So we're like building a wooden house inside a wooden house. So if you're not following exactly what I'm talking about, don't worry, we're gonna show you in a couple of videos. All right, another two by six that wasn't on the original plans that we decided to change to a two by six wall is right here on the bathroom. We were talking about the shower, the toilet and the vanity. I said, you know, Jordan, you know what would be really cool if you put one of those in the wall tanks. So you, instead of your toilet being way out here, it's way back here, giving you a lot more room in your bathroom. And the rest is history. So what we did, we made this a two by six wall because the tank is about three and a half inches deep in a two by four wall, no insulation. With this way, with a two by six, we can get two inches of foam insulation behind the tank and insulate that wall. It's gonna be epic. I can't wait to see this bathroom done. Now let's walk to the front of the house. We got this wall ready to frame. Let's show you what we did. All right, guys, even though this wall is pretty long, I think there's only 12 studs in it. And here's what we're gonna do. We know our window rough opening, the width. We just don't know the height yet. So we're gonna frame the wall with our kings. Then we're gonna add the jacks and the headers later. We're actually gonna take a drive Monday and figure out the windows, but that'll be easy to do. So we have two 3.0 windows mulled together. That means they're simply joined together. We figured out all the math. So here's a king. Got a big opening, look how big that is. Another king, a two foot wall, another massive window, a two foot wall, and another massive window, and a little bit of wall here. Now over here on the kitchen side, we made sure that this wall was deep enough to accommodate a 24 inch counter. We're right there, but remember, we're gonna have a jack and a jack, so we'll be way out here. It's gonna work perfect. So why don't we grab our studs, quickly nail this wall together, stand it up, and see what this house is beginning to look like with some windows on the front. All right guys, this wall is all nailed together. Couple of details. Here's our joint and our top plate, and I offset the joint and our bottom plate. It's over here. So that way they don't line up and the wall won't tend to do that as much when we lift it. And the other thing I did, let me know in the comments if this is too much. Already thinking like Joel and an electrician. I offset the middle stud so that when we put an electrical box down here at the bottom or a sconce at the top, it's in the middle of the wall and the studs not in the way. Is that thinking too much? No, I don't because that would, that would piss me off for the rest of my life. So it, thank, thanks for doing oh, that. You got it, man. It. All right, let's lift this wall up. You don't sound too excited about it. You want to try look, that again? Look, all right. <laughs> Come on, give me some energy. All right, let's Woo! lift this wall up. Is, is that better? Yeah. <laughs> Get it. Big, big window wall going up. One, two, three.
All right, guys, we got this front wall tipped up and it looks absolutely great. It's gonna look epic from the street with those big black on black windows with the transom overhead. And what a view Jordan's gonna have from the inside. Now I know in the video, it looked kind of flimsy standing up because it is. Remember, don't have our headers yet for our windows or the jacks, that's gonna tie it all together. But one thing I did, we did to minimize how flimsy it was, we have a joint in our bottom plate right there. And remember, we always put our joints under a king or under a stud, something like that. So we can nail both sides to that stud. But in the top plates, we don't put a seam here because that thing's just going to act like a door hinge right and it'll be like this so we offset as much as we could put it there but when we add the headers up here double top plate yeah the yeah. sills everything else is going to be great because we're headed down south on monday pick our windows and then we'll know exactly how high we want these things how tall they are all that good stuff but let's head over here to the back wall I've already got it laid out and let me show you how we do it. I don't think we picked it up over there on those walls. I actually take the plans and I copy the walls onto my floor. We already chalked the line, right? We know where that is. So here's the center of my wall. I went out equidistant for my doorway going out. Here's a jack, a jack, and a king. So from this jack to the other one is the inside rough for my door. You just gotta get that from your door or window supplier. Now we made a change on the fly again on the windows the architect called for a 4-0 four foot zero inches wide by 5-0 window on the back on each side of the door but when we laid it out we had a jack a jack a king a king and a jack big stud pack right there so guess what that means we don't have room for a wall switch here to control the lights on the uh, deck or the fans or whatever so we just made the decision to make this a 3-0 window make this wall a little bigger now we can get some electric in there. And the other thing about it, this is a 3-0 window and so are the ones in the front. So it kind of all ties together. So all we got to do now, take our sill plate material, butt it up against that bottom plate that's already there, transfer all these lines to that, build our walls. And speaking of making changes on the fly, let's head over to the bathroom. The plans don't show a window in a bathroom. I just got to tell you, I think we got to have one in here, Jordan. My first idea was put like a slider up here in the shower wall, but y'all had a great point. When you look out of that slider, what are you gonna be looking at? The porch, the, the roof for the porch. Underside of the roof. Right. Really, it'll be nice because we're building it, right? But not the greatest view. And then you said, what about a window centered over the wall hung toilet? Because then you're looking out at these trees and it's almost like you're in a tree house, right? Yeah. And that's great because our rough opening for our toilet tank, I think is 19 and a quarter. So once we get that dialed in, we can dial in a window centered directly over the toilet. I love that idea. So let us know in the comments, where would you put the window? A slider way up here for ventilation, or maybe a single or a double hung right here with a nice view of the trees on the east side of the building. And while you're typing that comment, we're gonna lay out this wall and stand it up. All right, gang, that is the header for the double back door going onto the deck. And as you can see, we insulated the middle of it with a piece of half inch foam. I really like that detail. It's not something we've ever done before, but as these houses get tighter and tighter and better insulated, I love it. We didn't do it on that one with the bridge because that is an interior space to an interior space. And to get the length on this, come on over here. I'm just pulling all my lengths right off the subfloor, right? Then I know it's perfect. I just measure from the inside of that king to the inside of this king, and I transfer that, cut it, and it fits like a glove. And just like that, there's the final exterior wall for the whole garage building. We got the roof, but the walls are done. And check out what we did with the header over the door. We just screwed it all the way to the top plates. I really like that detail. To me, it's stronger. Then we can fill in here with a two by above the door and some cripples, insulate that, and any electric can just run through right over the top of the door. But it's Saturday afternoon. We all have plans. We're gonna go home, get cleaned up, have some fun. We'll see you guys bright and early Monday morning. All right, gang, it is Monday morning. It is good to see you. Now, I arrived at the job site all prepared to build our two bathroom walls. But when I got here, Jordan threw me a curveball. He was online actually looking on hows 
for inspiration for his bathroom and his entire house. And he came up with a great idea for the bathroom that I really love, which is gonna alter our plans today. The bathroom originally had a flat nine foot ceiling with a knee wall tying into our truss roof above for kind of an awkward little triangle shaped attic above the bathroom. What he wants to do, just make this wall go all the way to our truss and have a nice vaulted ceiling in the bathroom. I love that idea, so that's what we're gonna do. Now we could build this wall nine foot today, just like these, and then add on to the top of it later, but that would make that wall kind of like that. So we're just gonna wait till the trusses are on and build one complete wall from the floor all the way to the trusses. So this part's on hold. So that means today we just have to build the two walls over at the stairs. But there's a bit of a challenge there also. Remember, we're gonna have this blower door tested. We want it as airtight as we can possibly make it. We're basically building a square wooden balloon that's shaped like a house. But the stairway is outside of the condition space of the upstairs apartment. So the wall right here is actually our air barrier. We're gonna turn the corner where Jordan is, make our air barrier follow this wall. So let me come on down these stairs and show you my challenge. And I'm gonna form that air barrier just by putting zip on the inside here. So imagine this piece of foam is our zip. If I put my wall here, flush with the framing, and put my zip on there, now I've got this half inch gap. I got some ways I can handle that. I can just continue the zip all the way down, put my drywall on there. I could rip a half inch strip, put it over our studs, put my drywall on that, and that's all so that the drywall is coplanar so they don't have a step right here. But that gives us another problem. Remember all the trouble we went to to make this gap down here for our drywall and our skirt board? If I pad this out, I won't have room for the skirt board. So what do we do? There's actually a very simple solution. We're gonna take our sill plate, move it back, 7 16 the thickness of zip. So this is flushed out, zip tape that, will be airtight, and Jordan's apartment just got half an inch smaller. Yeah, thanks, dude. You're welcome. All right, let's build these two walls. All right, guys, that wall requires 17 plus foot long top and bottom plates. We're out of long two by fours, and we really like a continuous top and bottom plate on these shorter walls. All we have left is some very long two by sixes, so we're gonna turn it in to a two by four. Nice, wrong nice. Wrong one, probably grabbed the wrong board. <laughs> oh, Rad's got it. Oh, <laughs> woo. Nice. I already laid out all the studs on my subfloor. Now I'm just transferring those measurements directly to my sill plates. No tape measure required. All right, got the two walls around our uh, stairway, went really fast. Now here's a quick tip on how to cut this piece of wood in our doorway. We didn't put our jacks up yet. There's all kinds of ways to do this, right? But the distance between the edge of my shoe and the blade is an inch and a half. Just happens to be the thickness of a two by four. So I got the blade set to the right depth. Oh look, we got a buddy. Wait, what? <laughs> hey buddy, that's not a good time to be oh, on that man. Thing, man. Yeah, you're gonna get horn up. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of there little buddy. Now 
we just throw our two jacks in. I'm the cut man, so I already have the door package all ready to go. See, this does not know to go. One jack, <laughs> just put my jacks right there, throw the header on top, a couple little cripples on the top of the door, this wall's done. All right, guys, we got our doorway in. Now we went back and forth about where to put it in this wall. Couldn't put it too far that way because we're probably gonna have a handrail bracket somewhere about right here. So we thought we'd favor the stairway with it, make a little nook here. Jordan can put a bench. That way, after he's been working in the mud all day, you know what that's all about. He can sit up here, take his shoes off and not track all that mud into his brand new house. So really like the idea of a nook here. Maybe you can hang your keys, phone charger, who knows. Now let's head over to this window wall. As you guys probably noticed earlier in the video, we didn't finish framing this wall for our window openings because honestly, we didn't know what they were. So yesterday afternoon, after we framed that door, we took a trip down to Houston, one hour to get there, not too bad. Went to a window showroom and picked out our windows. Now we didn't film any of it because it really wasn't that exciting. It was just the three of us plus the sales rep at a table discussing all the different window options, colors, finishes, glass. Jordan was crying. Me and Rad had to calm him down. It was a big mess. But our goal going into that meeting was to come away with two things. Number one, what windows are we gonna use and let's get them ordered. Number two, what is our rough opening? I kind of guessed on the width and I nailed that. But what I didn't know was the height. Now that we know that, let's put in our headers and frame this little wall at the bottom. Our headers only need to be nine inches tall. So we have everything ripped right here, even the foam. Let's put those together and install the headers. Things lined up. Correct. Nice, that'll save us some time. Yep, I think that's gonna work great. Okay, awesome. Do you wanna show it? Show what? How we're taking that cuff out with screws. I'm recording, dude. Oh, okay. I'm live, say, say hi to the people at home. Hi, people at home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Try that in a small town. Sandwich? Sandy. So I'm gonna need to move those too then. The ones I just did. Yeah. Alright game, we got all three headers built. Now I'm gonna measure for the length of my studs. So instead of trying to like eyeball it, I'm just gonna lay the header here at the bottom, put my tape on my top plate, come on down. 95 and 5 eighths. Let's cut six jacks, 95 and 5 eighths. <laughs> One's good, I'll put two in when I get it down. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you're gonna hold it with that? Oh, yeah. Oh. Nice. Ready, Jordan? Yeah. Perfect. All right, gang, so we've got our header in, and we've got our top plate, of course, but this board, this two by four that we used for our top plate was twisted. So when we nailed it into this king stud here, you can see there's a gap just because of the twist, the nails all the way in, but it's so twisted that it just, there's a gap there. So what we're gonna do is our jack is cut to the right height, which is flushing out our beam, our header with our king stud. So now we can screw this in, secure this together and pull a screw into this top plate and suck everything down so we're nice and flat, huh? It's pretty good. Yeah, dude, that's money. All right, gang, here's our sill plate for our window. It's gonna go there. We'll put another jack here, trapping it between this stud. Now we don't have our layout yet on the bottom here. So I'm just gonna flip this over, transfer our layout. We'll nail the studs to it here so we can see our layout, then pick the whole thing up, set it in place, and toe nail it here on our layout on the sill plate. That way we're not trying to get under here to our layout line. All right, this window's done, but it's 100 degrees out here and we got two more to do. Let's get it done.
All right, gang, we're all done with the front wall framing and it looks absolutely awesome. This is kind of the way it's gonna look with these three massive windows all centered on this wall. A few details we wanna point out. Of course, we have our insulated header up top. We have our sill, which is captured between this, basically a jack stud. So this right here, it'll never twist. And of course right here, our cripples line up with the studs on the first floor. So that's gonna make putting up our sheathing a lot easier. And then don't forget right here, we offset this stud from the center. So if we center a sconce or center a plug, it's in the middle of this wall. We accounted for the thickness of the box or the width of the box. So let's talk about these windows for a minute. Originally, it was a 3-0, 36 inches wide, and another 3-0 mold together at the factory for a six foot wide window, and that's still the case. But on the height, it was different. Originally, it was a six foot tall window with an 18 inch tall transom on top. Really, really tall, which made the bottom of the window down here. And that was fine, but because the glass is now so close to the floor, 18 inches is the code, right? If the glass is within 18 inches of the floor, it's gotta be tempered. That meant these windows had to be tempered glass, which drove the price up. So Jordan and I asked the guy a couple little questions and we actually shortened these windows, made them shorter this way to five feet. That got us more than 18 inches off the floor. So now we have a window where the glass is more than 18 inches off the floor, so it doesn't have to be tempered. So that saved Jordan a lot of money. And then it's also cheaper because now we have a five foot tall window instead of a six foot tall window. And I think it still works here, bud. That is a massive window at your front yard, yeah. So can't wait to get those in. We're not gonna show you what we picked out yet. We're gonna leave you hanging. But for right now, let's head over there behind Jordan and frame up the windows in the back of the house. All right, guys, there are our two windows looking over the backyard. Can't wait till we actually get the window in there and see how awesome it looks. And over here, I am standing in this slider. It's gonna be buttery smooth, open that door, head out onto our porch. So in the evening, that photo cell will bring down the automatic bug screens. Whoa, whoa, don't tell them all that. Oh, oh, sorry. And then over here in the bathroom, of course, gonna have that epic shower with that toilet tank recessed in the wall, maybe even a skylight. Okay, you're, you're giving too much away. Oh, oh, what about the fireman's pole over here in the kitchen for a quick getaway? I thought we were doing that. But honestly, gang, the only framing we have left up here is the bathroom walls. Can't do that until we get the trusses up. So on Thursday of this week, the Stud Pack team is headed down to Houston to a truss manufacturing plant to see our trusses being made. I can't wait for that. It's gonna be super awesome. I love factory tours. But even though there's big changes on the Stud Pack job site, Mother Nature hasn't changed. Still over 100 degrees, so we are done for the day and we're gonna wrap up this video. We hope you guys enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed making it for you. Don't forget, check us out on Instagram, at Stud Pack Official. Remember our website, studpack.com. Check out our merch. Make yourself a big window opening over that like button so you can smash it. Don't break your tempered glass. Please subscribe and mean the world to us. We are so close to half a million. What a milestone for our channel. And we'll see you on the very next Stud Pack video.